Good morning and welcome to worship here at Littleton Street United Methodist Church. I'm Mary Abbott, Director of Children's and Youth Ministries, and I welcome you today. We have several announcements to keep in mind. Uh, next Sunday, July 12th, we're excited to remind you that we will resume corporate worship with an outdoor service at 845 in the, at the, on the east lawn of our campus that's behind the Family Life Center. That's at 845. It will last about 30 minutes. We ask you to bring your own chair or blanket to remember your mask and to remember social distancing. It's going to be great to be back together. And as always, we will continue our online services as well. So we have something for everyone. Don't forget tonight at 7 o'clock, we're asking our church to come together for a time of prayer for our country. At 7 o'clock on Facebook, there will be a very short video that will sort of help set the tone for prayer and get us into a prayerful attitude as we go to God, asking him for the guidance and direction that this country needs so greatly. So 7 o'clock tonight, please stop what you're doing wherever you are and join your church family in prayer. Our programming lineup for this week includes a 5 o'clock music meditation with Ike at 5 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. On Tuesday at 10 a.m., you can find our health and wellness video on Facebook, and your church staff will also meet at 11 a.m. On Thursday night at 6 p.m., please join Katie Ann Rickwood for our church-wide prayer meeting. And Friday at 6 p.m., reading the Bible together, will air on Facebook. As always, on Sunday mornings, you can find our children's lesson at 1030 on Facebook and our toddler lesson at 1045 on Facebook. We want to thank all of our church members who are coming together to provide these wonderful messages for not only our children, but for our church in general. Please remember Rose Parton in your prayer this week. She was recently moved to Karish Rehab, so please keep her in your prayer. And don't forget to check the back of your bulletin that you can find online. For all of our church members who are in the hospital, who are recovering at home, who are in nursing home facilities, and of course those serving in our military. We have a, a brief announcement from our SPRC Chair, Emily Cato. Good morning, church family. Today is an exciting day for our church. Today we welcome our newly appointed associate pastor, Tay Park. Let me share with you a little bit about Tay. He was born in Seoul, South Korea, and moved to the United States when he was seven years old. After graduating from Spring Valley High School, Tay attended Columbia International University, where he completed a bachelor's degree in science. Then he received his master's in divinity at, from the Candler School of Theology at Emory University. A couple of fun facts about Tay is he enjoys fishing with his family and bowling with friends. Although we are not able to have a gathering at this time to welcome Tay, I know that you will join me in supporting Tay as he begins his career in ministry. Tay, on behalf of Littleton Street Congregation, we welcome you and are so excited you are here.
is Christ in me. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day and for this time together. Please bless us, guide us, and open our hearts and minds for the message before us, for the music, for all that is said and spoken. May it praise you and glorify your name. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to Children's Time. This morning we're talking about burdens. Do you know what a burden is? If we look up the definition of the word burden, it will tell us that it means a heavy load. And typically that would be um, something that we would think about as being something we carry or pick up. What's the heaviest thing you've ever picked up or have to carry? I know that your book bags are very heavy. When you come to church on Wednesday afternoons, you are just burdened down with this book bag, with your textbooks and your Chromebook and your library book and all of your school supplies. These can be really heavy to carry. What's something else really heavy that you've had to pick up before or carry? I'll give you a funny story. A long, long time ago when um, I was dating, who is now my husband, Mr. Abbott or Rich, um, I got a flat tire in my little Toyota car. And of course I didn't have a, a jack that would help, you know, lift the car. Um, and his roommates, nor he, had a car jack either. Crazy. So my husband and a friend picked up my car and held it while another friend changed the tire. Isn't that funny? I think that would definitely be one of the heaviest things I've ever seen picked up or carried. And um, he could probably say the same as well. But today we're talking about a different kind of burden or heavy load. Today we're talking about burdens like maybe a parent who's lost their job and is struggling to pay bills and um, meet financial responsibilities. We're talking about burdens like someone you love getting a scary diagnosis at the doctor's office. Um, we're talking about maybe the kind of burden where you find that your grades are slipping, that you're trying hard, but your grades just aren't showing it. We all go through struggles like that. We all have those burdens that we sometimes have to carry. We know how it feels to pick up something heavy, something that weighs a lot. But when we experience burdens, it's also sort of the same. We carry those inside of us. They weigh us down. They worry and bother us. And it's just a lot to carry around. Our scripture today reminds us that we will have troubles. We will have burdens. But here's the good news. God will always be there to help us carry those burdens. It doesn't mean that because we're Christians, because we're followers of Jesus, that we won't have burdens. We will. But we have help with them. God, he will help us carry those heavy, heavy burdens. And that's really good news, isn't it? We've all experienced burdens. But God is there. Join me in prayer this morning as we ask God to come into our hearts and into our lives to help us with our burdens. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for hearing us as we pray. Today we come to you with worries and concerns, things that are hard and heavy to carry around on the inside. We know from scripture, from your word, that you tell us that you are with us to help us carry our burdens. We're asking you today to come into our hearts and into our lives to do that. We love you and we trust you and we know that when we read the Bible, it is your holy word. Thank you for loving us and for helping us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next Sunday. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are thankful for a brand new week that gives us so many opportunities to worship you and to serve others in your name. God, we are weighed down with a lot of burdens, but we know that you're there. The good news today is that you're with us to carry those burdens. Make your presence known, dear Lord, not only in our lives, but in the lives of all of your children who are worried and weighed down today. On this July 4th weekend, God, we thank you for this country and for the freedoms that we enjoy. 
We ask that you continue to bless our nation. Help us to see revival and renewal. Be with our leaders, all of our leaders, from this small community throughout the world, that they may turn to you for guidance and direction. God, we thank you for the men and women of our military who have given so much so that we can worship openly, so that we can make our own choices and decisions. Be with us, dear Lord. Forgive us for turning our backs on you. Come to us now, guide us and direct us. God, we have church members who are going through so many issues right now, and we have family members who have concerns as well. Be with each of these people. You know us better than anyone, and we just ask that you meet all of us where we are. Make your presence known and give us peace, comfort, and healing as only you can. Now, dear God, as we continue worship, we just praise you and give you the glory for all of our many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We invite you now to a time of giving where you are asked to um, remember your church with your tithes and offerings.
Our gospel lesson this morning is again from Matthew's gospel, this time the 11th chapter, verses 16 through 19, and then again verses 25 through 34. Hear now the word of the Lord. Jesus says, but to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. O Lord, as we bow before you with the words of Jesus ringing in our ears, we look at our burdens. We look at all of our needs and we put our trust in you as we let the word speak to us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever read a passage of scripture and then looked at it again and thought, well, that sounds like it could have been written today. That could have been something that we would see on Facebook. It could have been something that we might even hear on national news. But the beginning passage of our scripture lesson this morning strikes me that way as Jesus talks about those voices that are always crying out in criticism. Those voices that are always talking about what somebody else ought to do. What somebody else has done wrong. What somebody else should be doing. It sounds like as we come to this Independence Day weekend, the voices that we keep hearing in our national political discourse, the things that we are told, the things that we hear, the negativity, the criticism, the ways that we look at other people and begin to tell them what they ought to be doing, what they ought to be saying. It seems sometimes that we have reached a time when our culture is a culture of burden adding rather than burden bearing. We find ourselves looking and seeing what everybody else ought to do or trying to tell somebody else exactly how they ought to be about things. And we find people trying to tell us how we ought to live. We find ourselves being given expectations for how we ought to to minister as a church. Uh, We find ourselves being told again and again of the things that We are not doing the way that others expect us. And we need to hear in this time that word from Jesus about his burden that he puts on us rather than the burdens that are all around us. You may have seen the commercial, if you are like most of us during this COVID-19 time, you have seen more television than you used to see and have seen more commercials to the point where you know them by heart. But the commercial about the couple who are living in a gated community, apparently, where there's a homeowners association. 
and the lady who is the representative of the homeowners association seems to come walking around carrying a tape measure and a rule book and she walks past their house and she saws down their mailbox because it's two inches too high she tells them that this is a violation and that's a violation that's a very strong representation of what it seems like we face sometimes these days in life but it isn't just these days I remember years ago a Presbyterian minister who was a good friend of ours talking about his first Sunday in a particular place where he had been called and he said sitting right in the very front row with her Bible open in her lap and a notebook beside her was a, a church member who had not been happy when he had been the one who was called there and he asked her after the service he thought maybe she was just taking notes. And she said, no, I'm writing down everything that you say that might be seen as a heresy. The burden that she was trying to put on him was very strong. We live in that culture where it seems that the burdens that are coming from the outside are put on us again and again in a lot of ways. And COVID-19 has added to these burdens all of the things that are going on around us add to the, the, those, that pile of expectations. And we need to hear Jesus' word as he looks at what was happening in his time when they were criticizing him for being one way and John the Baptist for being the other. And it seemed like nothing would satisfy some of those people. And after he used that image of the children in the marketplace calling to each other and criticizing each other he lifted this prayer that some people think sounds so much more like John's gospel than Matthew's gospel but listen to it again as he says I thank you father lord of heaven and earth because you've hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants his answer was an answer to all of those who fought they knew everything. His answer was an answer to those who thought they had it all in their hands, who, who knew what everyone should be doing. And we know that there are so many, and we, if we're honest, we look at our own lives and we see the burdens that we seek sometimes to put on others because we think we know. Of course, COVID-19 has been a proof to us that we don't know as much as we thought we did. We're not in as much control as we thought we were. Even when the wisest of us seem to be needing to hear and to find a little bit of more humility. I remember telling congregations over the years after hurricanes, tornadoes, other things, the weather sometimes proves to us that we're not in as much control as we like to think. God still is acting in ways that move beyond anything that we can control or say. There's a Sunday school class in a, a church that I'm aware of that ha used to have a motto on its wall that said, We plan and God laughs. Jesus' prayer, mentioning those who seem to have the, the least of knowledge and wisdom, but being given the gift of wisdom and knowledge, is a reminder to us that our trust should be in Him. Our hope should be in Him. Our knowledge should be in Him. And then He gives that wonderful invitation that He offers to us to cast our burdens on Him. As I was reading it, this passage another time, I began to hear Jesus talking to Martha. You remember the story in Luke of Mary and Martha and Mary sitting at Jesus' feet listening and soaking up everything that he was saying while Martha was so distracted by all the serving and everything that she wanted to do that uh, she began to become angry with her sister and wonder why her sister wasn't helping. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're distracted by many things, but one thing is needful. Mary has chosen the better part, because Mary had chosen to sit, to listen to Jesus. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And he talks about the burden that he offers to us. There's an old song that's in the Cokesbury hymnal that used to be sung a lot in a lot of places. 
It says, When I, a poor lost sinner, before the Lord did fall, and in the name of Jesus for pardon loud did call, he heard my supplication, and soon the weak was strong. For Jesus took my burden and left me with a song. Yes, Jesus took my burden I could no longer bear. Yes, Jesus took my burden in answer to my prayer. My anxious fears subsided. My spirit was made strong, for Jesus took my burden and left me with a song. We bring our burdens to him. We lay them down in front of him, and what he does is to take our burdens and to yoke himself with us. The picture of the yoke, you can always picture the oxen with the, or whatever with the two animals walking side by side. Imagine what it's like if we are yoked with Jesus and Jesus is walking and pulling beside us, giving us the strength and the help that we need, carrying us in those times when we can't carry ourselves. But what burden does Jesus put on us? He says his burden is light, is easy, but what is the burden he puts on us? I think we can go back to his words where he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And some of our neighbors, that might be, seem like it's a burden. But we love our neighbors as ourselves. We love, love God first and then we live lives that, that show that love in the way that we are around others. I remember many years ago, my father-in-law, who was a very gruff, quick-spoken, short-tempered man, was laying new flooring in their kitchen. And he was working late until the night while my mother-in-law was working at uh, Rachel Memorial Hospital. And he was working late at night, putting down the new flooring. And he, it was hot. And it was in Columbia. It was hot. It was, it was a rough time. And he looked up at, at my wife uh, and said, if I didn't love your mother, I wouldn't be doing this. It was not a burden. It was a labor of love. Some of the things that we're called to do are not burdens anymore. They're offerings back to Jesus because of the love and the gifts that he has given to us. We all are familiar, or most of us are familiar with the story of the statue at Boys Town with the one boy carrying his brother on his back and it says underneath, he's not heavy, he's my brother. That's not a burden when it's a gift of love. What are some of the burdens that we have come to face? I think all of us during this time of the pandemic have come to face the burden that we need to be wearing those masks anytime we're out. Not because of what it does for us, but for what it does to protect others. And I expect next Sunday when we gather for the patio service as you come in, I expect that we'll see a lot of people with those masks on ready to worship God together, to socially distance. Even though we're going to want to give each other a hug, we're going to want to, to, to shake hands. Uh, as I have, have told many of you, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you face to face. But we're not going to be able to get too close face to face. But we are going to be able to be there together. And our burden is going to be to, uh, our, our gift of love staying that socially safe distance apart, offering hope, offering joy together, worshiping the one who gives us the strength for what we face, greeting each other as the family of God. It's an easy burden that demands more of us than we can imagine, but because it's a gift of love, we carry it with joy and hope. Jesus says, come, let's come to him with our burdens. Lay them before him. Pick up the burden that he puts on us and go forth living in love and hope and joy and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
we depart today, dear Lord, help us to remember that we can trade our sorrows. You're with us. You're here to carry the load with us. Be with us as we go out into the world as your disciples. Amen. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord.